Hello, I'm Marilyn Hall, and if you're like me, you love Oktoberfest and dirndls. And it's really fun if you can go down to Oktoberfest and you can dress up and you become part of it. So I've had a lot of fun with my dirndls through the years. I have three daughters, and so from the time they were little, I've made them dirndls. And through the years, I've learned some tricks of ways to make the dirndls fit better and um, the right kind of fabrics to buy and where you can get them where it won't cost you an arm and a leg. Okay, now through the years too, people have given me dresses because I outfit a bunch of our kids here in our little town where they have an Oktoberfest. And so I've, I've been collecting these dresses and I've learned a few things. I have 200 and some, and uh, some are beautiful from Germany or Austria, and you can pick up cute little tips by looking at these dresses and examining them. So I'm kind of a lucky gal. Not many people get to see that many pretty dresses up close. So I'm going to share with you some of the tips of things I've learned through the years and places you can buy uh, fabrics and trims and uh, some of the hardware to make your own dresses be just as pretty as some of those you might have to go to Germany or Austria to get. So come along with me, we're going to have fun. All right, the first supply you need is a sewing machine. I bought this sewing machine uh, probably seven years ago at Hancock Fabrics. It was $89 and you don't have to spend a lot of money on a really expensive sewing machine. The skill is in you, it's not your sewing machine. But this one does basic stuff, it does buttonholes, blind hem stitch, zigzag, and that's about all I ever use. I did get a serger about a year ago and I love my serger, so my husband bought that for me. That was a nice treat. Another thing I really love is my swinging um, light. It has a magnifying section, bright, and when I have to rip out a seam or fix something um, that I need to see up close, this is really awesome. So I think I would, I would spend a little bit of money on that. The third thing I really love is I went to an office store and they had this table. It's an eight-foot buffet table. It was on sale for $20. It was scuffed up. The top of it was a mess. So I bought it, $20. I came home and I got to work. But I found that the dark surface wasn't very good for making patterns. So I covered it with a smooth contact paper. It's white. And so for making patterns, which I do all the time for my dresses, I can trace things really good and if it gets scuffed up or whatever I just cover it again with white contact paper and I've got a new table. Those are the three things I think you need to start out with. There's of course the basic sewing supplies, I'll show you what I have here and I have a room that I um, can close the door off when I need to and just leave all my stuff and that is something that I've really enjoyed the last few years. Before that I sewed on my dining room table so this is a huge step up for me. Essential supplies for making a journal. The first thing is an iron. And I know sometimes people don't like to iron, but if you don't have an iron, you won't have a nice looking dirndl. It has to be pressed and the seams, the pleats, um, all the things you're doing. If you don't have an iron, your stuff's going to look like a mess. The second thing is my pins. You need some nice pins. And I get these ones that are steel and I have a magnetic holder. If you should happen to need to clean up your table, you just go down here. Shoop. All the pins are on the cushion and, and it's really handy and I can spot it really easy. Another thing is tape measures. I have metric on one side and just uh, inches on the other and I have three or four of them floating around my room for different reasons and I really uh, need these. Another thing, I have a nice tape dispenser. I use this for making patterns and uh, holding things down as I'm going to sew and um, I think that you need a nice big heavy tape dispenser and keep it down in your sewing room. Another thing is seam rippers. I have always having troubles finding my seam rippers because they're so tiny, but they're essential. So I went to the store and I found one of these little springy um, holders and I attach it to my light and then when I'm busy sewing I have my uh, seam ripper attached and I don't have to worry about losing it. I spend too much time hunting for things. So this one I glued it onto my seam ripper and I attached it to a ring and then there you go. This is very handy. One other thing I really like is my little gripper tool. I don't know what it's actually called. It looks kind of like scissors, but there's little, um, I guess, teeth right there. You can latch onto things. I use it for sewing. Um, sometimes I have to sew buttons onto later hosen and different things by hand. And sometimes I need to take a lacing through um, the front of a dirndl and through a little opening. And this is just really handy. So I recommend you get one of these. And paper. This is special paper. I got this from my doctor's office. 
and I bought a case a number of years ago. This is the exam table paper, and they sell it by the cases. I don't know if your doctor will let you, but I, this is my last roll, and I'm stuck with some kind of advertising for some kind of drug. I really like it when they're just clear and white. They're very see-through, and they're very nice for making patterns, and they fold really nice and small. I just recently found a medical supply place in the next town over, and it's $70 for a case of 12 rolls, and so I've ordered it, and when I get it, I hope that they're all plain without any advertising. And what else do I have that's really essential? I think that's about it. Oh, wait a minute, one more important thing. It's my ruler. I have a T-square. Now this is a very handy tool. This is 30 inches long, metal, very nice to have. And there's a little hole on the end right here, so you can hang it on a nail if you want. Um, I have kids in my house, and I have got boys. So I had one that was plastic, and it disappeared. I think it turned into a sword or something, and they broke it. So I decided to spring for a nice metal one, and I've had this one for probably 10 or 15 years, and I don't think the boys can break this one. Okay, that's my main supplies. And so now I'm going to show you, oh, I forgot, scissors. Scissors. You've got to have a nice pair of sharp scissors. I use these all the time, and I do have a pair of pinking shears. I use them occasionally, but just a nice pair of scissors. And sometimes I think it'd be a good idea to have one of these little springy things to hold on to them because I'm hunting for my scissors quite a bit too. All right, that's the main supplies you need for sewing. Thank you for watching my video. Um, if you would subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll be posting a video in the next few days of a little girl's dress in the making. It's uh, going to have a special ruching around the neck, which is a German word for ruffle. And I'll show a couple different techniques you can use to make a ruffle. And uh, it'll be really fun to add that to your next pieces that you do. And I'll see you in the future. Goodbye.